Okay, here we go with our top secret project. It's both, but I don't know where the spade, uh, spade went. Broke it off. Damn it. I go get my metal in so I don't want to run out from a scrape car. Or a grain car. Okay. Jeff's done with his job, so like a good gopher I am, I'm out here tearing my place up. I got my secret project stakes in so that people can't find me on Google Earth anymore, so I'm about to uh, start Operation Invisibility here. <laughs> I gotta go get the excavator going. Hang on to your butts. Okay, today I'm uh, moving my ditch away from the shop to expand my yard. Give me the ability to uh, extend my shop on the north side. So, I'm going to show you how you build a ditch and how you engineer that. So, first thing is Matt went up top and he found the high water mark. And he shot that. Then he went to the bottom, shot the high water mark. Uh, took the difference, divided that by the number of stations. The stations are spaced uh, 100 feet apart. Uh, that's pretty much standard for doing a ditch uh, in America. Anyway, so what we use is we call it tents and it's engineer's grade. So this is a stick. Now there's so there's ten tenths in a foot. This is the this is the bastardized metric version of Amer uh, American. So you got ten tenths in a foot, and then ten hundredths between each tenth. So like this is two feet. So if you were going to shoot two foot sixty eight, that would be there's six tenths. Two four six eight, so that would be 2.68 uh, feet. So tents are a lot easier to work because they are like metrics. They're in you know increments of ten. Uh, so anyway, this ditch has one tenth per hundred fall, and that's pretty good for an irrigation ditch. Two tenths will really make the water scream, but uh, this one has a tenth. So when you engineer them, <clears throat> what you do is you put uh, the top of the fill at water grade. So this black line is water grade. And uh, when I get in there to V it out, that will generate the freeboard. That'll give me about a foot or better of freeboard depending on how big I cut it. I like <clears throat> to cut V ditches with my 14G. It gives a really nice a uh, big slope bank uh, you don't you don't have to clean it every year you just got to spray the weeds or burn them off and you can go for years and years and years without ever getting into them so uh, I'm probably gonna have 
18 inches of freeboard by the time I get done cutting it with the 14G. Uh, if you've seen some of my other videos, uh, Instagram stuff, when I cleaned this ditch over here, you saw how big it was. But they will really carry the water. So basic rule of thumb, you need at least a tenth per hundred fall. Uh, you can get away with less, but they tend to silt up. And then if they get weeds in them, the water doesn't want to flow very well. Uh, always put the top of your ditch bank grade to water level. And that is the high water at that end and the high water at the other end. And then divide that figure into the number of stations you have. And then that's the amount of fall you have on through. And it works great. Uh, it's a time-tested, proven system. Works every time. Okay, when you're building a ditch with a scraper, you gotta slow down and you gotta always smooth and uh, use your eyeball and try to keep the grade uh, nice and, and even. And then if you're using a twin engine scraper and you're smoothing, turn that rear engine off or you'll start to get the duck walks. And once you get the duck walks, pretty tough to get that uh, crap out so uh, you can see I'm starting to smooth it up uh, there's some places I'm getting pretty close to the black line now I'll finish this with a blade 
but before I owned a motor grader I used to build these with a scraper and they would look as nice and pretty as a blade did them. There's a lot of tricks to building a ditch with a scraper and one of the things uh, I would do is always stop at, start at the top, build your grade to the black line as you go and every time you dump off, you know, dump, it tapers off and every time you come back you start right where you left off and dump and continually build that fill. Now this dirt is pretty soft, it's kind of muddy, pumping, so it's kind of hard to finish. But finish as you go with a scraper, that's the key, is to constantly finish. Now guys will say, well, it costs too much money to be finishing with a scraper. Well, yes and no. If it's a one-man scraper operation and you don't have the other equipment, uh, it's not that much more money to finish as you go. You know, you get good at it, you get quick at it. Uh, I mean, if you had, let's say you had a roller, a water truck, and a blade on this job. This ditch would be cost prohibitive. If you're working for a customer, they're not going to pay you that kind of money to do it. So, you got a, let's say you got a $350 scraper, you got a $150 an hour grader, you got a $100 an hour water truck. Yeah, that's too much money. So, you just learn how to do it and make it happen and do a good job and the cost is to where the customer can afford it. So. Uh, my advice to you if you're running, learning how to run a scraper is learn how to smooth. If you're working on a big job, lots of scrapers, they don't want you doing that shit. But if you're out on your own doing little jobs, uh, parking lots, little things, you got to be able to finish. Even if you got a grader with you, he's going to absolutely love you if you can dump that material close to grade. So... He doesn't have to spin the wheels and push it all over the place and try to get it to grade. Uh, scrapers are amazing pieces of equipment and they can do some incredible things if you take the time to learn how to do it. So this is my ditch pad. It's uh, pretty close to grade. I gotta get out the laser and check it. Maybe redhead it. I made it really wide because I want banks on it wide enough to drive the four-wheeler down to spray weeds and stuff and then over here so i'm gonna strip all this dirt off down to gravel let me show you what that looks like so once you get down through this it'll start to pop up you'll have some dirt and gravel and dirt and gravel but this is our pit run gravel here there it is and that will go clear down through the water table lava rock is about 90 feet deep here so a lot of gravel so my thinking and I haven't totally figured out how I'm going to do this yet but I got to find a place to stockpile all this dirt strip it down to gravel and dig a hole put gravel all on this raise it back up and push the dirt back in the hole and stockpiled enough gravel to go back over the dirt probably a couple feet and i'm probably going to do it clear down on that end this is my buddy out here at secret project doing a little filming Digger deep, boss man, digger deep.
Pretty slick little cutout he's got. Dig it out. Got a nice place to fill dirt over there. Dump her out. Works out pretty slick. Yeah, don't that sound good? Ow. Take that old girl along below the bowl. Ha <laughs> ha! This is the boss man just messing around on a Saturday. I come up here to visit him, so I'm being the cameraman here for a minute. Hope you all enjoy. This beats the shit out of watching TV any day of the week in my world. Ha <laughs> ha! Wish I was out there with him. girl's ass about slid off the hill. Getting cold out here. This wind's a cold, nippy bitch. You didn't even honk the horn. Oh, God. I was giving you. I used to haul onion bags over to Nyssa, Ontario, all around Mido Falls. And I'd go over there, Appleton, and all of them back that the same day. Whew, that was tough. And a, and a single screw Mack truck with a 48 foot van trailer. <laughs> Onion bags loaded to the ceiling from the back. Well, that's not been that long ago. I was working for Bohm. Oh! I. Yeah, when did you work for them? <clears throat> well, let's see. From. I only worked there not even quite a year. Then Boise Cascade called me back and said, What will it take to get you back over here? And I said, Hold the door open long, wide enough, I don't hurt myself running through. <laughs> Want a hat? Where are them from? Uh, the Gerber boys over in Upton. Oh, cool. Which one do you want? Blue one. Okay. Oh, sweet. Yeah, there's no uh, 
No, it's Esty somehow. Oh. You put them on, and I, I pull them down, and it goes, whoop, and they look like Beldar Conehead. <laughs> Dan Hart Patrol Service. Right on. It's a nice hat. R12 beer? <laughs> <laughs> These are beer coolers. Just had a tea. <laughs> It's we'll just sit here and it's pretty impressive. Sip I, some R12. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to, I think it's cool enough. We don't need to be drinking that shit. We need to drink antifreeze. <laughs> need to be drinking antifreeze, not yeah. R12. Like I told you before. Shit, I used to cool, be able to go 1100 miles a day and not even bat an eye. But not now. Now I can't even hardly drive to Blackfoot without needing a nap. <laughs> You're at Hell's Half Acre. Jeff, I'm at Hell's Half Acre. I gotta take a little nap. I gotta pull over. I can't nap. quite make it. I'll see you there tomorrow night. Well, that's not a nap. Yeah, but I'm pretty tired. Yeah. Well, ever since I've been sick and laid up, I've just got worthless and I'm not used to traveling anymore. So. It seemed like it took forever, as many million times as I've been through here and up and down 39 to my God. Aberdeen and American Falls in 20 years. Jesus, I beat the hell out of this road. Oh, when I wasn't out of the state, it yeah. was all the time. Constantly. What What are you doing with yourself right now? What's every day like for you? Sucks. Your mom Mom's is in, in extended a rough way. care. Mom's in a rough way. My health hasn't got any better it still sucks you just got over a cold bad cold i didn't even hardly move last week couldn't breathe couldn't get no air i was sicker than a dog but you're you're in a house you got heat and lights for a couple months at least so okay what's gonna happen with your apartment are you are they have you got some... No, I haven't even been there for over a month. I haven't even, I haven't even been over there. Since I've been at Mom's house, I don't know, I just, I feel so guilty about it, the whole thing. I don't want to face the landlord. I don't even know if anything's left over there. You think they might have moved your stuff? I don't know. I would think if that something like that was going to go on, I'd have got a phone call, but... I don't know, every night I think about it, I need to go over there, and, but I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed and I just feel bad about it. Well, there's nothing you can do. Nothing I can do about it and I don't, why the hell should I go over there and crash out and freeze to death, no power or nothing? And when I can sleep at Moss House where the furnace works and don't take much to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. But we got to get Moss House ready to sell everything, so it's been the cousins started the foreclosure procedure on Mom's house because Medicaid, Medicare wants their money. Because the place she's in now is $7,000 a month to keep her there. Mm -hmm. It's 24-hour care, so she's got to be there. I mean, none of us, I can't take care of her. Yeah. And she's in a wheelchair and she can't, her wheelchair, she's got no way to get in and out of the house. It won't even fit, I don't think a wheelchair would even fit in the bathroom. So, there's nobody, she's asked to be there. Yeah, this has gone, how long has it been rough? Has this been two years now, or two, more than two? In February, it'll be three. Will it really be that long? You didn't, yeah, you didn't have any idea this would happen. So, when I got... You're a dumb lawyer. My uh, health went to hell. Was it be three years on February 18th? That's when. Your dumb lawyer didn't do you any favors, did he? No. He totally f left he all half, that. He half-assed everything, and he's screwed me. Screwed me pretty good. You gonna let me call him and ask for a donation? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to call him and tell him, ask him for a little more than a donation. I'd like to hit him right in the mouth. <laughs> but. And now I'm waiting for the appeal, and I got a new attorney that's 
gung ho. He says I can do this the right way and win it. Is this the guy back east? No. No, this is the guy right in Idaho Falls. Oh, okay. But why well, still got it's in appeal right now, and I haven't heard jack shit. I put the appeal in in May, and I still have had no word whether they denied my appeal, uh -huh. approved it, nothing. So I'm still stuck in limbo. Well, it's been awful nice, you know. I, I know you were getting down on funds, or I was worried about you, and bam, somebody had sent money in the mail. Yeah, so it was like, wow. If it wasn't for all those, your people, I mean, you're their, you're their almighty. They follow you, and you're, you're my the, friends. I understand my that. My friends. But everybody looks up to you. Everybody will have to watch your show. Not when they come here, they look down because I'm only 5'7". Well, you are a little dude. You look down on me. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm six <laughs> foot three. There's a little difference. <laughs> I don't ever look down on you. <laughs> well, I know. But, uh, yeah, if it wasn't for you and all these great people, just helping out a sickly old U.S. Navy veteran, and I'm damn proud of it. And I will be till they pat the dirt in my face, but... I'm just worthless now. I can't do much of nothing. My legs are going to hell on me, and I'm afraid I'm going to be in a wheelchair. Are they, your one leg is still numb? Oh, yeah. But then when I broke the tendon in the other leg, it's been pretty rough. How'd you do that? Slipped on the ice. Oh, last winter? Or? No, just two months ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I broke this tendon in my leg here. Oh, it did? The teller tendon. I think that's what they call it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I've been hauling them around for a couple months. Something. They still don't get around very good, and this leg's still numb. Something's jacked up in the back or something, but uh -huh. I have a hell of a time getting around. The thing that pisses me off is all two years I was waiting. When I go down to there at his office, I say, you need to have pictures mm -hmm. of this on my file. No, we don't need that. We don't need no pictures. We don't need no pictures. If he'd had fucking pictures, we probably wouldn't be talking about this right now. That's the whole goddamn thing that ruined my life. I used to be a hard-working son of a bitch, and I still would like to be a hard-working son of a bitch, but goddamn, even riding in Mom's Crown Vic, it beats the hell out of my guts, and I just can't do that shit anymore. I need to have another surgery here to fix this tear I got. I've been putting that off, waiting until winter. Is it bleeding? You know, I have trouble with it. But when I get do get too active or something, and it irritates it, but Jesus, there's a bulge right there that if I do one thing wrong, my guts will be gonna be laying on the floor. So I gotta be real damn careful what I do. And it's the only thing that right there that's holding that together. And it's been what's that thing they do on pregnant ladies? Oh, um, ultrasound. Oh, yeah. And the doc told me, he says, man, he says, if you don't be careful, that's what's going to happen. Just muscle and the skin is the only thing holding that in right there. I've already been gutted three times just like this. I got one of these. Right all up and down here. Now I've got to have one over here. Well, on a brighter note, <coughs> um... All 24 go-go -go tapes are gone. Yes. So <laughs> that that was nice. Absolutely. So uh, that's uh, to the people that have bought them, to everybody out there that's helped me through this hell. I can't thank you enough. And you have no idea how what that means. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Whiteboard where I get to introduce you to some of my awesome subscribers and I got a lot of them. Send me a lot of cool stuff. Love your comments. I uh, hope you enjoyed the premiere video I did last Friday. Uh, let me know if you want to do that again. Uh, I'm learning. Uh, I got I to gotta figure that out so I can type your names in and stuff and respond to you quicker. But. Uh, I didn't watch any of the video, I was just reading the comments and trying to respond. So thank you for supporting me on that. And let me know if you want to do it again. But I want to start out with Cody Turner. He's from Monroe, Utah. 
I remember meeting Cody down at the Salt Lake Truck Show, so it's good to hear from you. Uh, Chaz, Chaz Riggs uh, from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Is it Chaz or Chaz? Uh, Don Adams, he's from Lacey, Washington. And Keith Winchester, he's from Douglas, Oklahoma. And Avakaj Ramjit from Trinidad and Tobago. I probably butchered your, both your names, sir, but uh, thank you very much for watching my videos down in Trinidad and Tobago. Jeffrey needs a vacation real bad. Maybe I should come down there and, and take a Caribbean vacation. That would be awesome. And Tim Gilbert, <clears throat> he's from New Zealand. Now, Tim, I'm probably going to butcher this. Is it uh, Taranki? Taranaki? <laughs> Not sure. But anyway, love my New Zealanders and my Australian subscribers. So anyway, thank you for sending your names in, and we'll see you next time. Hey, if you'd like to buy an Anderson Construction hat, you can visit my store at www.jpaydirt.com where you can get a hat of your choice and color. And you can also pick up an Anderson Construction calendar that has all the pictures of my equipment in it. Or if you choose, you can get the J Paydirt swimsuit calendar. Along with the J Paydirt button, uh, those funds go to help support a veteran. Uh, with some health issues so I totally appreciate you guys supporting me there and also too if you would like a, a link to the toolboxes where you could get those and the old Kenny coloring book all those links are in the top of every video top comment it's pinned at the very top and it has all the links it has my address if you'd like to write me a letter send me a newspaper anything like that or if you'd like to send a donation to Shane. So go check out those links and uh, thank you very much for supporting Old Pay Dirt.